What's a river's favorite sport? I don't know what. It is running. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for the children's hour. Kids Public Radio. Science. My garden this year is a jumbled up kind. My cow peas and daisies are all intertwined. My botanist friend had me plant them just so. She's collecting the data that may help her show how a good mix of plants brings more insects afield. And maybe more bugs means a healthier yield. And I jumped at the chance to take part in her plan. Cause I'm happy to help when I can. I'm a citizen. and measured their size I've counted the cutworms and spiders and flies My botanist friend takes the data all down She'll compare it with gardens from all over town And maybe the numbers will show us the way Toward gardening well without pesticide spray But whether or not her study bears any fruit it has still been a worthwhile pursuit Cause I'm a citizen Scientist I'm a citizen Scientist Joining the planet-wide dance That helps human knowledge advance When the garden has been tilled What new project will I do? I could help explore the cosmos For the galaxy zoo I could sift through tiny fossils from mastodon times I could try to fold some proteins with folded online In the great backyard bird count I could help keep track of birds With SETI at home I could search for alien words And for more exciting projects I could start working on I'll visit SCIStarter.com I'll visit SCIStarter.com Cause I'm a citizen, scientist, citizen, scientist, joining the planet-wide dance that helps human knowledge advance. Science! That's Monty Harper with Citizen Science. Today's episode comes with a learn-along guide. Find it at childrenshour.org. Look for community science. I'm Katie Stone. I'm so happy to be here at the Outpost with a whole lot of great people and on Zoom. Hello, everyone. Hi. 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 Who's with us today? Hi, it's Luminata. Yellow, it's Haley. It's Lily May. Hi, it's Corbett. Hi, it's Nina. Hi, it's the Orphan. Hi, it's Max. Hi, it's Xavier. Hi, it's Amaya. Hello, it's Cade. Well, thanks so much for being here. We're going to learn about something that's pretty cool. It's this organization that takes care of our Boscape by watching out for that bosque. And for those of you listeners who don't live in New Mexico or somewhere in the Southwest, the word Bosque means the foresty area around a river. And the organization that we're going to be talking to today is called the Bosque Ecosystem Monitoring Program. They turn everyday students, just like you, into community scientists. Are you ready to learn more? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're listening to the Oh, yeah. We'll be right back. 
baby's in the high chair Her food is on the floor She's testing a hypothesis And she needs to know more Square and orange will stick as she predicts Round and green will bounce like a ball Her carrots and peas fly one by one Until the outcome becomes predictable We are born to do science A baby can do it and so can you We are born to do science Just figuring out what's true Baby's out of juice now uh -oh. So she throws her cup It makes a happy clatter And her daddy picks it up How can she make him do that again? The need for data is evident She giggles with anticipation As she launches her new experiment Come on, daddy Pick up the cup hmm. Maybe if I to do science is from songs from the science frontier you're listening to the children's hour i'm katie stone and with us on the show today are two educators from the bosque ecosystem monitoring program zoe wadkins daniels is the education manager and annie montes is one of the environmental educators welcome to the children's hour thank you for having us yeah thank you for having us today what is bemp so, as we said at the beginning of the show, BEMP is an acronym which stands for the Bosque Ecosystem Monitoring Program. So, usually when we introduce our program to kids, we kind of go through each of the words. So, the very first word is bosque, which is, of course, here in the southwest, a very special type of forest, a forest that runs next to a river. Um, and so, what does the E stand for? The E is actually one of my favorite words, and it stands for ecosystem. Uh, how many of you here by raise of hands have ever heard of the word ecosystem before? A lot of kids are raising their hands. That's great. So for those of you who are not raising your hands, that's also very exciting to me because I get to introduce you to this word. So ecosystem is essentially a word that talks about all of the living things and all of the non-living things that are in one place all together and how they all exist coincidingly, how, they're, how they are together as friends, right? Or potentially as enemies. So we have the B is the bosque, and that's that beautiful little special forest that's found in deserts along the rivers. And then we have the E, which is the ecosystem. And then we have M, which is monitoring. monitoring. Yeah. So monitoring is another one of those kind of tricky words to define. So usually I ask students, what do you think monitoring is with your body? So at this point, we can pause and we can just all make a little motion and see what we think monitoring is. Hmm. A lot of people are like pretending they're looking in binoculars or uh, writing things down. Uh, they're pretending to look up and down and take pictures. <laughs> uh, they're doing a lot of looking. 
So all of those actions, looking, taking pictures, taking notes, these are all examples of monitoring. So basically what we're doing is we're going out into the bosque and we're recording things in the form of data. And we have many different types of data that we collect, but we can get into that later through our conversation. And then program, of course, is just what you are. You're a program. And you're a program that actually goes into schools and works with kids. How many schools do you go into? It usually depends a lot on the year, but right now we have about 18 different schools that actually come into the field with us. They come out into the bosque, and then we actually go into a variety of schools as well that don't maybe have the opportunity to go that far or don't have transportation, things of that sort. So in total right now, I think we're working with about 29 different schools. What do the students do at BEMP? That is a huge question. We do so many things. So as Zoe mentioned, one of the things we do is we visit campuses and we have various classroom lessons that we have put together about bosque ecology. So for example, we may come to a campus and set up a monitoring site. So we'll look at things like rainfall on the campus or what insects we find there, just to show students that you can collect data anywhere. The second thing that we do, as Zoe mentioned, is we go into the field with students. So we take them physically out into the bosque and we collect data, data that can be used by all sorts of organizations. So these data include precipitation, groundwater, litter fall, which isn't about garbage. It's about pieces of plants falling onto the ground. And we also look at this thing called arthropods, which includes insects and spiders and things like that. How many years does your litter fall collection go back? That's a really excellent question. We So as an organization, we've been around for, I want to say, almost 30 years now. We're actually one of the oldest organizations in New Mexico that's been collecting this data. And so our data set, unfortunately, doesn't go back all that way, only because in the first couple of years, it, you know, that's been quite some time now. But we still have data that we look at from about 20 years ago. That's really impressive. Why do you do BEMP? I think we can both uh, answer this question. So this is Annie. I do BEMP because I love New Mexico and I love my community. And I love making these connections with students where I get them to love it with me. So it's just an amazing opportunity to connect us to the land and to show students that anybody can be a scientist. And this is Zoe. So I I think that's a really excellent question, too. And it makes me really wonder why it is that I do BIMP. So thank you for asking it. I I feel like for me, it really blends together all the things that I love the most. I love being outside. I love exploring our nature and our ecosystems. And I also really love being a teacher. And so for me, putting those two things together and helping to inspire a younger generation to do that same thing is really, it's, it's really special. It helps us to see how we're all part of the ecosystem and how we impact that and how we can move forward. We're talking with Zoe Wadkins Daniels. She's the education manager at BEMP, the Bosque Ecosystem Monitoring Program, and Annie Montes, who is an environmental educator with BEMP. You're listening to the Children's Hour. Don't forget, we've got a learning guide with this episode. We'll be right back. S-C-I-E-N-C-E. Science is the place to be if you want to find out what makes the world go round. On the earth or in the air, science tells us why it's there. If you want to find out why things go up and down, it's a matter of science. Science, it's everything you see. It's sound advice turns water to ice and electricity. S-C-I-E-N-C-E, science is the place to be if you want to find out makes the world go round. S-C-I-E-N-C-E. It's everything you see. S-C-I-E-N-C-E. It's everything you see. It's a matter of science. Science, it's everything you see. It's sound advice turns water to ice and electricity. S-C-I-E-N-C-E. Science is the place to be if 
want to find out what makes the world go round and around if you want to find out what makes the world go Apples don't fall far from the tree Sometimes you act just like me Apples don't fall far from the tree It's just common sense Save up for a rainy day You'll need it when the skies turn gray Save up for a rainy day It's just common sense What makes it common? Does it make sense to you? Why do others think it's true? If we pay attention Ask questions every day Maybe then we'll understand When we hear people say Good workers don't the tool that's true at home or at school. Good workers don't blame the tool. It's just common sense. Many hands make jobs more fun instead of working one by one. Many hands make jobs more fun just common sense What makes it common? Does it make sense to you? Why do others think it's true? If we pay attention Ask questions every day Maybe then we'll understand When we hear people say A change as strong As the weakest link An idea's as good as how we think A change as strong As the weakest link It's just common sense A mighty oak From an acorn grew Everything old Once was new A mighty oak From an acorn grew It's just common sense That was It's Just Common Sense. That's the Folk Club Kids. And before that, science was Nancy Stewart. A Learn Along Guide comes with this episode that meets and cites national education standards. You can use it in the classroom or just for fun at home. Find it at childrenshour.org. Look for community science. You're listening to the Children's Hour, Kids Public Radio. We'll be right back. The Children's Hour is produced by the Children's Hour Incorporated, an educational nonprofit based in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We're listener supported at childrenshour.org. Find your play at Electric Playhouse in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's fun for kids and adults who want to play like a kid again, featuring 16 interactive spaces with constantly rotating games and a full restaurant. Families can play and dine at Electric Playhouse. Tickets and investment opportunities at electricplayhouse.com. Many thanks to the County of Bernalillo, New Mexico, for their support of our Learn Along Guides that meet and cite national education standards. You can find them all at childrenshour.org. Thanks, Bernalillo County. The Children's Hour is supported by the New Mexico Humanities Council. Since 1972, NMHC has sought to engage New Mexicans with history, culture, and diverse humanities topics. NMHumanities.org You're listening to The Children's Hour, and our guests today on the show are from BEMP. 
It's the Bosque Ecosystem Monitoring Program, and they are collecting data on all kinds of environmental information and facts in the area that's a forest around our rivers here in the high desert southwestern United States. What type of data do you collect? That's really great. So we actually collect a lot of different data. As Annie was mentioning, when uh, students come with us out into the field, we look a lot at precipitation, which if you are familiar, that's anything that's falling out of the sky, like rain and snow and sleet, stuff like that. We always look at litter fall, which Annie was also mentioning. It's, It's actually plant material. So when our seasons change, right, think about in your own mind, think about how those trees look different, right? Do they look the same from spring to winter? A lot of those trees change, right? Of course, a lot of the trees that we have down in our bosque are cottonwood trees. And so we're looking a lot at our cottonwood leaves that fall, a variety of other species like that. And then we also uh, monitor wells. So we see how much groundwater we have that's actually feeding into the river and helping to get the roots of those trees. And then if we're lucky, we will we'll go out and we'll collect data on spiders and insects and ants, all of those really cool arthropods that fall into cups. We do a lot of data. We also look at, at stormwater. We look at a lot at what kind of pollutants are coming down when the rain hits the mountains and how that leads into our river, things of that sort. So forgot my very favorite set of data. Oh, no. (laughs) And that is our botany set of data. So every single summer, we get to go out and we get to identify every single plant inside of our sites. So the area that we're studying in, which is my favorite thing to do because I love, love, love identifying plants. Let me try to imagine how this works. You go with a classroom to the river forest area, which we call the bosque. You mark off a section. Maybe it's, how big is that section? They're actually pretty small. Uh, So depending on the area that we're monitoring, because we actually have 33 sites along the Rio Grande, which is really awesome. Depending on where we are, the site can be long or short. And by that, I mean, it can be anywhere from like 500 yards. So it's not a huge area, but if you're thinking about all of the data that we're collecting in that tiny space, it really is pretty robust. So then you collect the data, all of this different information, the types of plants, the amount of leaf litter, the amount of rainfall, types of little arthropods that you find. You collect all that data just for that little strip of a section, and you have 33 of those. And Is each one really, really different or why do you have so many different ones and what happens then? Yeah, all of our sites are really different from one another. So our northernmost site is actually located in the Santo Domingo Pueblo. And then our farthest southern site is actually down in Las Cruces. And for our listeners who don't live here in New Mexico, that is a pretty long distance. That's probably a couple hundred miles. It is. I think it's close to three or 350. Yeah, it's quite it's quite a span. And so we have a very different ecosystem far north than we do all the way down south. And then the majority of our sites are actually here within Albuquerque proper. And so when you think about that, even our communities here are very, very different from one another. And so that into itself is very interesting to look at. Just how our northern sites that are, you know, around the Alameda area versus looking down towards San Jose, stuff like that. They're very, very different from one another. Some are a little bit more deserty. Some have different types of plants, all sorts of differences. And Zoe is describing a section of Albuquerque that's in the north part of Albuquerque and another section of Albuquerque that's in the south part. And maybe there's only about 10 miles between those two areas but it's amazing how different a river area can be. Lots more questions from the kids. I'm going to go to Beth. What's the coolest thing you found from your research? That is an amazing question and maybe impossible to answer because there are so many cool things that we have found from our research. I think for me personally is seeing the amount of plant diversity, again, bringing it back to the plants, 
and the differences between the sites. So it's really amazing. So for example, on one site, we can have like 40 species of plants, whereas in a very deserty, arid site, like some of our sites down south, we might only have 10 species of plants. So to me, it's really cool to see the, not only the differences in the communities, so the different types of plants that we see, but also the density of the plants um, is also really cool and interesting to me as well. It's not really from our data, but I think that the favorite thing for me of what I've found is how many students and young people, how many college age people, how many old people even have engaged with BEMP and how many show interest in learning about what's happening in our ecosystem and how it's changing. That's Zoe Wadkins-Daniels from the Bosque Ecosystem Monitoring Program. Lots more to learn about community science on our show today. You're listening to the Children's Hour. Pickleberry popcorn, pickleberry popcorn, pickleberry popcorn, pop, pop, pop. Marcy, what are you doing? (laughs) Well, I'm feeling the air. How? I put my hand in front of my face and I speak. I say the word pickle. Try it. Pickle. 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 Pickle, pickle, pop, pop. Pickle, pickle, pop, pop. Hey, I can feel the air on my hand. Isn't that great? Cool. We can't see the air, but we know it's there. Get a balloon and blow, fill it full of air. When it's blown up, then we know that the air is there. Hi ho, fiddle dee dee, we don't see the air. There. Take the balloon and go Find a scale somewhere Weigh it empty, weigh it full Find the weight of air Hi-ho, fiddle-dee-dee We don't see the air Hi-ho, fiddle-dee-dee Still we know it's there Let it go and air will flow, it's flying like a jet. Hi-ho, fiddle-dee-dee, we don't see the air. Hi-ho, fiddle-dee-dee, still we know it's there. That was We Know the Air is There, Kathy Fink and Marcy Markser. You're listening to the Children's Hour, and today on the show, we have the Bosque Ecosystem Monitoring Program. They are teaching kids how to be scientists, and kids are actually collecting real data that is used by government agencies, tribal agencies, policymakers, leaders, and more tracking the ecosystem of our fragile forest area that is near our rivers, specifically the Rio Grande, which runs right through the center of New Mexico from north to south. How much insects have you collected and how much like bugs have you collected right now? I don't really know how to quantify that, Max, but that, I love that question. If we had another one of our employees here, uh, he's kind of our bug guy. He's the resident bug man who knows absolutely everything. But what I will tell you is this. One of the most popular insects that we find a lot of are little uh, roly-polies, if you've seen them, right? They, they kind of have this 
beautiful shell that kind of folds into itself and they turn into a little ball. We have bags and bags and bags and bags of them in the freezer. So I would say lots and lots and lots of insects. So you say that there are a lot of different places that can use the information you collect. If there are, what are the projects that are currently going on that people should know about that this data is being used in? Yeah, so a lot of our data actually goes towards federal contracts and federal partners. We have tribal officials that are using our data. Even local officials use that data. And so we have everything from uh, folks who are working with water policy here to uh, looking at the longevity of climate change in our ecosystem. And that There's a lot of people that are using our information. So uh, if you've ever heard of the uh, United States Bureau of Reclamation, if you've ever heard of the Army Corps of Engineers, people like that use our data all of the time. And what's so neat is that that data is actually, it's being collected by students. And so that student's data goes towards these huge organizations that are making really big decisions based off of what we found. What do you use the data that you collect for? Yeah, what kind of things are you looking for? Are you looking for climate change information, change over time, or just just to know what's out there? I think that the Bosque Ecosystem Monitoring started at a time when we started to realize all of the impacts we were having on ecosystems. And I do think that the primary objective in collecting all these data is to see change over time. So whether that change over time means the climate's getting drier or hotter or warmer or colder, we're just trying to see what is happening, what are the differences, how are plant communities shifting, how is our groundwater and our surface water patterns shifting? I think that it's difficult to say what we're seeing. I think that one of the main things that we are learning, right, is that our cottonwoods are getting to an age where they're dying. And unfortunately, in order for cottonwood trees, little saplings and seedlings to survive, they need a much moister, richer, wetter soil in order for them to grow and sprout and survive. And unfortunately, because we've made so many adjustments to the river itself, that surrounding area of our riparian forest, it's not wet enough. It's not, it's too dry. And so our future generation of cottonwoods is unfortunately not there for us right now. And it's, it's showing us the value of a lot of the other species in the ecosystem to be canopy, which is, you know, like shade and things and habitat for other creatures. But unfortunately, a lot of those trees and a lot of those plants, the ones that are thriving right now, they're exotic plants. They're plants that are not really supposed to be there. And yet they're providing habitat and shade. So it's, it's asking a lot of questions more than it's giving a lot of, a lot of answers to us. Is BEMP just an Albuquerque? That's a really great question. So yes, BEMP is actually on, an only Albuquerque-based organization. However, what is so cool about BEMP is that a lot of what we do are things that people can do no matter where you live. We talk about this idea of citizen science. I, I like to call it community science because the word citizen to me is is very one-sided, but community science, right, the idea of other people becoming or engaging in science, I think it's two things. One is that we're all scientists, naturally. You don't have to go do these fancy things and wear a white lab coat to be a scientist. The fact that you're out observing, you're just paying attention, that into itself is science. We have a lot of different activities, a lot of this data that we've been talking about and a lot of ways to collect that data. We actually have materials on our website that allow you and, and help you to create those sorts of things in your own backyard. So if you wanted to create your own BEMP monitoring site in your backyard where you're looking at litter fall and precipitation, you can do that. We, have, we provide you with the resources uh, that you would need to make that happen. We've had BEMP on the Children's Hour before and very recently, a listener reached out to us from Michigan asking, where is the Michigan BEMP? And it turns out there isn't a Michigan BEMP. So wherever you live and you're listening to the Children's Hour, now you know what's needed in your neighborhood. And there are the tools to help you get going at BEMP.org. That's B-E-M-P dot org. What you do with BEMP is really inspiring because 
what you're doing is you're not only collecting this really important data that we need in our community to know how to make plans going forward way beyond just what does the river look like or will these trees get water, but where should we build a bridge or a road or houses And not only that, you're inspiring kids to realize they have the power to be part of all of that by collecting this data. It's just so cool. I'm so grateful you took the time to come with us on the Children's Hour today. Thank you all very much for having us. Yeah, thank you so much. This has been really fun. My friends think it's boring when I want to go exploring the particles and elements the building blocks of life but give me a microscope and two ounces of hope and we just might make science history i want to be like madame curie when i grow up explore the world that's always twirling and other stuff She was a professor, the first woman ever in Paris at the university. It's not easy to discover what Madame had uncovered polonium and radium that others could not see. So she took a microscope and two ounces of hope and found the theory of radioactivity. I wanna be like Madame Curie when I grow up. Explore the world that's always twirling and other stuff. Just like Madame Curie. I want to be like Madame Curie. That's Renee and Jeremy off Science Fair singing about Marie Curie, a pioneering scientist and the first woman to win a Nobel Prize. Curie discovered the elements of radium and polonium and pioneered the field of radiology in medicine. From x-ray imaging to treatments for serious diseases like cancer, Curie's work paved the way for an entire field of medicine. We've got a learn-along guide for this episode at childrenshour.org. Look for community science. United Way of North Central New Mexico supports the Children's Hour. Outpost Performance Space in Albuquerque, New Mexico is a proud supporter of the Children's Hour. The Children's Hour is supported in part by an award from New Mexico Arts, a division of the New Mexico Department of Cultural Affairs, and the National Endowment for the Arts. 
Support for the Children's Hour is also provided by the City of Albuquerque's Cultural Services Department and the Urban Enhancement Trust Fund. Token Ibis is a supporter of the Children's Hour. At Token Ibis, they know that philanthropy doesn't need more money, it needs more people. Users can direct Token Ibis money towards their favorite New Mexico nonprofits. Learn more and sign up at tokenibis.org. Get me wrong, I love science, I really do. I love the weather and Earth's gravity and the penguins at the zoo. Sometimes you just have to tape it up and make it do because I'm done with the science. I built a giant volcano with my dad, but the lava flow just looks so sad. I went to bed, he stayed up till two Sometimes I just have to tape it up and make it do I don't have a care Because I'm done with the science fair For another, another long, 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 long school year I don't have a care Because I'm done with the science Stand up on the top of your house and buy your 
Works in construction, that's the one beside living minds. psychology aka science oh and if you don't like science that's fine just throw it on your food and find your dinner outside but don't use weapons to kill animals to eat and don't pick food from a garden not even weeds hunting and gardening involve lots of science remember what you told me science maybe you shouldn't believe in yourself but then maybe you disappear and that would be some amazing futuristic mind over matter in other words science oh we're studying again that's good because i got some more stuff to say here we go Deedle deedle dees with if you don't like science, that's fine. Before that, done with the science fair is off Are You Listening by the Nodits. You're listening to the Children's Hour, and today on the show, we're learning about community science, sometimes called citizen science. That's when people come together without necessarily being experts themselves to help contribute to the field of scientific research. And today reminded me that volunteers like you or me are so important to that work. It not only helps us understand our world better, it can even save lives. At the Bosque Ecosystem Monitoring Program, or BEMP, we know that people help collect samples of water or litter fall to better understand natural disasters. Meanwhile, across the world, Volunteers are crucial to studies that investigate diseases or possible treatments. We've got a little more music today. Stick with us. This is the Children's Hour. So cool. Thank you, science, for keeping us. 
Next on VPN Mystery Theater, the mystical science librarian. A chilling tale of science and mysticism. Ah, ah. Meet the mystical science librarian. That's me. He's fully fluent in the text of the Sumerian. Babylonian. He can be found with all his books in his solarium, discovering missing trivial facts and thinking about sharing them. Planetary rings are skinny. He's scientific. Every littlest thing about this guy is just terrific. That's me. Mystical science, mystical science librarian speaking. Uh-huh. Pythagorean. Uh-huh. That's right, Pythagorean. Thank you. Meet the mystical science librarian. He believes in learning things that some may find contrarian. He doesn't mind if you're a leader proletarian. His mission is the greater good. His cause humanitarian. And if you're down, he'll help you break into hilarium. By calling out the names of all the fish in the aquarium. Like trout, or salmon, or flounder, or hunu hunu nuku nuku apua. He's the mystical science librarian. He's the mystical science librarian. Ask him anything you want about barium. Barium? I can't believe you've asked me about barium. I once read in a periodical that barium can be found more than periodically on the periodic table. Period. Hello, library of mystical science, mystical science library. Librarian. Who is the mystical science librarian? I'm the mystical science librarian. The mystical, the mystical science, science librarian. librarian. That was the Dirty Sock Fun Time Band, Mystical Science Librarian. Before that, Marsha and the Positrons and Claudia Robin Gunn with Thank you, science. And thank you for tuning into the Children's Hour today. We've got a learn along guide posted with this episode. It meets and cites national education standards. Please tell a teacher. Find all our learning guides at childrenshour.org. Look under our podcast tab. We've got time for one more tune. This is We Work Well Together. It's from the Folk Club Kids. I'm Katie Stone. I'll catch you next time here on the Children's Hour. Our planet Earth, our planet Earth spins round the sun, spins round the sun. In all kinds, kinds of weather, weather, it's our only home, it's our only home. That's why we try, that's why we try to work well together. When we breathe out, when we breathe out, the trees breathe in, the trees breathe in. In all kinds of weather. The trees breathe out, the trees breathe out, and we breathe in, and we breathe in. We work well together. When plants grow old, when plants grow old, they decompose, they decompose. In all kinds of weather, their seeds grow up, their seeds grow up in the fertile soil, in the fertile soil. They work well together. The rivers and streams, the rivers and streams, run to the sea, run to the sea. In all kinds of weather, the sun turns water, the sun turns water into clouds again, into clouds again. They work well together. My neighbor and I, my neighbor and I, work side by side, work side by side. In all kinds of weather. And we take turns, and we take turns, sharing what we have, sharing what we have. We work well together. Our planet Earth, our planet Earth, spins round the sun, spins round the sun. In all kinds of weather, 
It's our only home. It's our only home. That's why we try. That's why we try to work well together. We work well together. The Children's Hour is produced by the Children's Hour Incorporated, a New Mexico nonprofit. Our show was written by Katie Stone with lots of help from all of us on the kids crew. Engineering support provided by Chad Shear. Christina Stella is our senior producer. Our learning guides are written by Jonathan Dunsky with help from Lorraine Archuleta. Many thanks to Zoe Watkins Daniels and Annie Montes for being with us on the show. Find our podcast wherever you listen to podcasts or go to our patreon.com slash the children's hour. Or ask your smart speaker to play the Children's Hour podcast. We post our photos and more on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Find us at TCH Radio. Our theme music was written by C.K. Barlow. The Children's Hour is distributed by PRX, the Public Radio Exchange, and by the Pacifica Radio Network. Thanks for listening to the Children's Hour, Kids Public Radio.